What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Michael Knapp Fishing. Uh, today we are in, under the carport uh, down at the boat because it is raining uh, exponentially on us. We tried to go to the water this morning, and uh, the rain was too much for me to be able to film anything because uh, all my cameras run open batteries on them. So we decided to come back. Uh, we're going to do a few videos in the carport because I'll be leaving for Florida. Um, well, by the time you all see this video, I'll already be in Florida. So uh, today's video, we're going to talk all about micro swim baits during the fall and how I like to fish them. So let's go, guys. All right, guys. So uh, like I previously said, I'm leaving for Florida. Um, I actually left for Florida this morning. Um, by the time you're watching this, I will already be on Lake Okeechobee in Florida. Uh, we're going to be having a good time out there, hopefully catching some nice fish. But um, I wanted to be able to still make sure that I brought out my videos for you guys for uh, today being Friday. And then obviously I'm going to be gone uh, Saturday and Sunday. So I'm not going to be able to get out on the water and film like I normally do in time for two, next Tuesday and next Friday's videos. So we're going to try and wrap everything up down here real quick as fast as we can and try to get all this prepped before I leave for Florida. So uh, today we're going to talk about micro swim baits. Um, it's one of those things that not a lot of people started doing it until a few years ago and still not a whole lot of people do it. But uh, it's one of those baits that I absolutely love. I fell in love with it a few years ago. And I'm going to show you guys exactly how I do and how I have success on it. So first things first, I'm going to show you all the bait that I love the most. Um, I actually have one down here already. This is the 3.5 inch X-Zone Lures Swammer. Um, this is, uh, it's not necessarily a micro uh, because they do make even smaller, not in the Swammer, but there are, you know, two inch plastic swim baits out there um, but th this is my go-to this this is the swim bait that I like this is the 3.5 inch swimmer um, so when we're talking about micro swim baiting a lot of people don't really grasp the whole concept behind it for some reason so uh, you know the, the big deal about the micro swim baits that I feel is the most underlooked underappreciated overlooked and underappreciated um, is the simplicity of it you know during the fall most people are wanting that big time top water bite the buzz bait the the wake baits the uh the whopper ploppers the spooks the whopper ploppers stuff like that frogs over grass you know that's what they're after in the fall that's what they really keen in on in the fall that they want to be throwing they want to be power fishing but one thing that i've noticed a lot especially on the tva lakes is these fish these bass are chasing shad that aren't necessarily big um i remember last year in the big bass tournament uh we we were out there we practiced for three days for that tournament and the biggest shad i could find was only about that big they were not very large shad out there so the one thing that we were trying to figure out is what can we use to mimic these itty bitty shad because I was throwing up, you know, I was, I was throwing vibrating jigs, I was throwing spinner baits, I was throwing big swim baits. I was after a big bite trying to find anything I could just to get them to hit it. So finally, I remembered in the back of my mind, hey, go down to the small swim baits. Usually something that I use heavily in the winter time. So I adapted it to the fall. So I'm gonna tell you guys how I adapted it to the fall and we'll do a different video for the winter version because it's completely different from the the spring summer fall version that we're going to go over now so first things first i'm going to show you guys how i rig it um i do rig it multiple different ways um so the first way that i rig it uh, shoot all right here's one that i've already got rigged up that was laying around i go with a uh, belly weight um it's a weedless belly weight and it is not on there very good because i have a bad habit of just throwing baits around but it's weedless, it's a, it's a weedless belly weight. As you can see, the hook is just under the surface there. I'll pull that down some for you. And it gives a nice wobble action as it's coming through the water. It kind of goes back, the, the swammer already goes back and forth really well, but the belly weight of it gives it even more action to it. Uh, this is the uh, Wu Tungsten belly weighted swim hooks. Uh, that's a 3 8, yeah, 3 8 ounce swim bait hook there. Um, but that, that's the one way that I like to throw it. And the reason why I throw this as much as I do 
is because I fish heavy cover. Um, I, I'm not afraid to put this down into brush piles. I'm not afraid to put this around trees, around docks, and I'll throw it up in there and I just let it collide off of everything, just like an actual minnow is gonna come through there and be erratic. This is gonna be erratic as that swim bait hook knocks over things and jolts off of stuff. It just gives it a little bit more of a natural presentation. Now, my next setup that I use, the, the next way that I rig a little swim bait, um, th this is how I fell in love with it. This is how I learned, um, I, I learned doing this during the winter, um, but I adapted it into the summer, spring, and fall. And this is hands down my absolute favorite way to do it. Get my swim bait hook over here. And it is open hook. Just putting it right through there with a jig head. And that right there is my all time favorite way to fish a swim bait. It's open hook. The hookup ratios are ridiculously high. I'm talking ridiculously high because, you know, once they bite it, they're not going anywhere. Nine times out of ten, they hook themselves, which is great. Um, but the, the advantage, distinct advantage over this is when you are fishing it into those open water areas, you're able to detect those bites. You don't have to detect those bites as quickly. Let me rephrase that. <laughs> uh, you don't have to actually detect the bite as quick as you do with a uh, belly hook. Because as soon as they bite it, they're pretty much going to hook themselves, and then you just have to lean into them a little bit. That's why I like this bait so much. Now, everybody already knows the disadvantage of it. You know, that hook is wide open you can't fish this around super heavy cover yes that is a huge disadvantage but i'm willing to take my chances nine times out of ten unless i'm really going to let it get down into the nasty stuff so i'm, I'm going to show you guys the hooks real quick off of the baits um just to wrap that up real quick just so y'all can actually see it um this is the Wu tungsten belly hook it does have a screw holder on top you just screw in your swim bait on top like so. And then you just place it wherever you want in the swim bait like so. I'm not going to pierce another one. But you get the point behind that one. And then this is probably my all-time favorite hook. Uh, well, swim bait hook. Let's see if I can get that in there for you. This is my own signature series swim bait hook by a Lick Creek Custom Lures. Uh, he specifically makes this just for me. It's a uh, sickle hook. You can see it makes that kind of a, a different distinct hook to it. It's not a round bend like this one. This is a round bend, and this is my sickle hook. Um, I love this one. Uh, like I said, he, he makes this uh, special darter head just for me. It's got that nice hook keeper on it that I really enjoy that, that keeps the bait up there really nicely. And that's that's the other bait head, the open hook head that I really like. I've got one more, though. Um, this is, um, I want to say this is a dirty jigs hook. Um, I, can't remember, I can't remember if that's the exact name or not. I'll link it down below. But uh, I got this from Tactical Bassin. Uh, Matt Allen raves about this hook. Um, it has got just a ridiculously strong hook in it. A big hook to be a micro swim bait. Um, and what I like about it is it is a little bit bigger, but it's got a really nice hook keeper on it too. Let me get that pulled up here real quick for you. So it's got the one hook keeper in the back, but then it's got this collar on it right there. And that collar just really lets it sit up there good. You see, that bait's not go coming off anywhere. Look at that. That bait is not going to come off. I, I really enjoy that, uh, this hook. Um, and then, as you can see, the keeper there. So, that those are my three swim bait hooks. Um, I might have said two earlier because I forgot about this one. But it is a total of three swim bait hooks. This one, the reason why I like this one so much is it's a heavy hook. But it comes in ridiculously small weights. This is an eighth ounce I believe it is 16th or an eighth eighth that's an eighth ounce I had to weigh the two uh, this is an eighth ounce hook but that is a big hook in it and I'll tell you where this really comes in handy for me is the Alabama rig in the winter time but like I said that's another video we're gonna get back to micro swim baits now so those are my hooks 
So this is the this is like I said the go-to bait for me, and I do throw it a lot of the time with my signature series swim bait hook by Lick Creek Custom Lures, and that's it right there. So now we're going to talk about the rod, the reel, how I throw it, um, well what I throw it on mostly, and then we'll talk about where we're going to be targeting. So this is my micro swim bait setup. Um, I know we're not, you know, we're not in super open areas like I wanted to be, but this is this is just gonna have to do for now. Um, so th this swim bait rod um, is it's not actually a swim bait rod. This is actually a, a multi-purpose um, old 18 ambush rod. Um, it's a medium action, but it's a moderate fast hook. Uh, I'm sorry, a moderate action uh, taper. Um, it's capable of throwing up to a 5 8 ounce lure, which is great for micro swim baits because we don't really throw anything over a qu well, I don't throw anything over a quarter ounce. Some of you may for micro swim baits, but I don't. When, once we get out of a quarter ounce, to me, that's no longer a micro swim bait. So, um, like I said, though, it's a moderate fast action. Um, I really enjoy the tip in this with the backbone. Um, I have it paired up with a Shimano Curato DC. This is the six three to one gear ratio. Um, I wanted a little bit of a slower gear ratio for this technique, um, not because um, not because that I need it to be slower, but I, I like the way that it comes through a little bit and I get a little bit more torque pull on it, especially when I'm fishing um, the belly weighted swim bait. I, whenever I get it down, like for if I'm in grass or something like that, and I go to pull them out of there, I get a little bit more torque on the on the six three than I do the seven one. So, personal preference. Um, I don't really think it matters. It doesn't matter to me because I have used other. I've used seven. I've used eight, um, but I do prefer the six three to one. With it being a DC reel, also it helps with the castability control. Just in case with those smaller baits, I don't want to risk any backlash or anything like that. Now with the Micro swim bait, I know a lot of people are used to seeing like six pound, eight pound test line. I don't do that. Um, I actually throw a 12 pound test fluorocarbon on it because I'm not going ultra finesse. I'm, you know, you see, I'm not using a spinner, a spinning rod. I am sticking with a bait caster. I'm gonna be a little bit heavier with my tackle. You saw those hooks. The hooks are a little bit stouter than a true finesse swim bait in the winter time. So that's why I go with a little bit more of a stout rod, um, a little bit of a, a stronger reel, and definitely some heavier line. So let's talk about now, uh, what are we gonna be targeting in the spring, fall, or I'm sorry, spring, summer, and most importantly now. So what are we targeting during this fall transition? You know, a lot of people struggle with finding the fish and finding what they're wanting to actually look for and see, they, they, they just can't put it together of what they're looking for and seeing on their graphs. So the number one thing that I'm looking for in the fall transition is bait. So I, I know that seems kind of counterintuitive that we're using a small bait fish, looking for more bait fish, what's gonna make them stand out, but just follow along for a second and we'll, we'll round back over to that. So what we're looking for is the bait fish. Nine times out of 10, they're gonna be holding on rock points, um, they're going to be in the back of coves, they're going to be around brush piles, but they're, they're starting to move up. Um, if you guys didn't see the fall transitions video, I'll link it right up above and you all can go watch that at, at a later time or right now you can click on that and then come back to this, whichever one you want to do. But as far as the targets go, I want my bait to actually go below the bait ball. So I know a lot of people are thinking, well, if, if they're feeding on that bait ball, why would I not want to be in the bait ball? Why would I not want to do something different than what the bait ball is? So the, my thought process behind this, and you know everybody has their own thought process on this of how they like to do it, but the way that I do mine is when I scan over that bait ball, I'm looking for those bass. So if the bait ball is here, and I've got a couple markings down here below the, the, below the bait, I know I want my, my bait to go below the bait ball, the shad. I want, I want my swammer down below the bait. So what I'm doing is I'm making it look as though there's one shad that has gotten lost up above out of this ball of bait. This one shad is down below straggling along not keeping up with the rest of the bait ball so it's going to be easy target for those bass. And that that's just kind of how I attack everything in general when it comes to micro swim bait fishing. Uh, that, that's just my personal preference as to how I target those fish and I have a, a pretty good success rate with it. 
of trying to imitate the one-offs, trying to make it look like the straggler that got left behind. It's really um, a simple technique that a lot of people don't think about. A lot of people want to run it over it, run it through that bait ball. But if you'll let your bait fall down below that bait ball, I think you're going to see a significant difference in your hookup ratio. Guys, I hope that really helped y'all out with micro swim baiting. I hope this, you guys like this video. If you did, please, please do me a huge favor. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button. Leave me a comment down in the comment section below. Hopefully, in two weeks, I'm going to have a great uh, Lake Okeechobee video for you. I, I, I can't pack any fishing gear. Um, we're going to just be, be going straight up. Just me, my clothes, my fiance, my family. We're all going down to see my grandfather, but I'm taking no tackle whatsoever um, i'm taking two fishing reels with me just to be able to guarantee that i have a left hand retrieve fishing reel and that i will be purchasing everything down there because i can't take it all on a on an airplane with me so uh, yeah, please stay tuned for those videos i think they're gonna be a lot of fun but uh, i hope you guys enjoyed this video take care y'all see y'all in the water